Hi, I'm Jay Andrews. Welcome to Laguna Tools. Today, we're gonna to do a setup of the new C-Flux Cyclone. This is brand new for 2022. Now, when your C-Flux Cyclone arrives, it'll come in by a common carrier, and they do what they call curbside delivery, which means that they get this box down off the truck and onto the property for you. From there, you should be prepared with some help or some tools to move this into your shop area. We've cleaned out the shop area here. You should clean out a good work area, clean off your workbench because you're gonna have a lot of parts that are laid off on it. Now, before you start, inspect the box, inspect the pallet, make sure there's no great big holes in it from the forklift or any damage that is apparent on the outside. If you note that there's any damage on your package, go ahead and put it on the shipping receipt so that the carrier knows and then give us a call within 48 hours and we can start a claim with the carrier. Now, once you open your machine, you can see if there's any damage to the components. If there's no damage, you're good to go and ready to assemble it. Now, the things that you're gonna to need to unbox your machine is an open and clean work area, a razor knife, and a clean workbench to set your parts on. There's a lot of parts that are in the top of the package and the manual and the remote control are here. Let's go ahead and lift these out, lay them on the bench and get ready for the next step. Now that you've got all the parts removed out of the top, we're ready to go on to the next step. What I find is easiest is to cut along the sides and open up the crate to start lifting the parts out. There is a plywood corner piece in here that you can cut against without damaging the machine or components. Let's go ahead and just start slicing the box open. Okay, now that we have the box opened up here, we're gonna go ahead and lift the cardboard away and move the styrofoam away. Now, before you get too far with this, you wanna make sure that you keep clearing your packing materials away, but save the packing materials, as some of them will be used during the assembly. Now, remove the plywood edging pieces or the corner pieces that we talked about in the last piece. These are the pieces that you cut against when removing the box. And then next, start removing some of the center styrofoam. The next piece to come off is this upper styrofoam section, and this is an important piece to save. So we'll go ahead and lift it out and set it aside so you can use it for assembly. Next, lift off the two pieces of the cyclone drum and set those aside. Right now is a good time to go through and have a look at the manual. As we're doing unpacking, there is an unpacking section in the manual. Open up to that page, follow along with the video. There's good information in both the manual and the video here. And you'll wanna go through and just do an inventory of all the parts as they're coming out and make sure that you have everything. Now at the filter and motor end of the machine, go ahead and start removing some of the styrofoam. Slide out the upright supports. On top of the filter is one half of the drum assembly. Slide that out easily and set it to the side. Next, carefully slide out the filter assembly. And finally, the other half of the drum. Now we have all the components out except for the last one, and this is the single most heavy component of the C-Flux Cyclone. You're gonna to wanna to have some help, at least another person or two, maybe more if, uh, if you need the help to, uh, to tip it out. We're gonna flip this upside down, and this is where you need that other packing material. Now I've laid out the cardboard on the floor here to give us a good work area. I've saved this little piece right here to go onto the side of the machine here so this upright doesn't get scratched as we tip it over. 
And then finally, this is the upper piece that was on top of the package. And we're going to tip the machine with the motor facing down into the recess of the styrofoam to support it. This is another area that I found it's easy to remove some of the styrofoam to make this process a little bit easier. First score the outside, then the inside. So keep an eye on the motor. The motor is uh, wired to the machine, but it is kind of free floating. So keep an eye on that as it tips over. Probably want to have one person on one side. I'll get some help from the other side and then just gently lay the machine over. Okay, now we're going to slide the styrofoam on it and then continue tipping the machine over. We lifted this unit up onto the pallet to get it up off the ground. Slide in the styrofoam. Be careful of the motor switch box. Now we're going to tip it up. Now that you've got the uh, main body of the machine upside down and in the styrofoam package, clear all the other packing material away. And you want to keep doing this throughout the entire process so you don't slip on the plastic or trip on any of the cardboard. I like to generally lay out my work area by matching the uh, same types of pieces together and you'll go through and see that there's three of these and so lay those all together. Lay out the wrenches. Now your machine will come with some stamp steel wrenches to go through and do assembly. Um, if you need those, go ahead and use them. If you've got some better quality wrenches, it might make your assembly go a little bit easier, make it more pleasurable for you to go through and install. So I'm gonna go through and use some standard ratchets, hex wrenches, and screwdrivers as well. Now follow along in the manual, and as you get to a step, lay out the parts for that step instead of having everything on the bench and scrambling for parts. I'm gonna go through and organize the bench a little bit for our next step. And we've laid out the parts for the next two steps here. We've got the casters, which are the next step, and the hardware for the casters are in the bag here, and they're marked here, the um, swivel casters, which these are, these are the swivel casters, and then the upright supports. Keep all of your hardware in the bags sealed until you're ready for that step. Now the first part of assembly is just a little bit of disassembly. We're gonna remove the base, and there's six bolts that go in. There's two here, two here, and then two here. Let's go ahead and get those pulled out. Now when you get these bolts pulled out, go ahead and save those. You'll use those for reassembly. Locate the bag that says swivel caster bolts, and you're gonna find those in the washers and you'll use a 12 millimeter wrench to install these. There are two types of large casters. One is just a plain swiveling caster. The other is a locking caster. The locking casters are gonna to go toward the opposite end or the open end of the frame. The standard swivels will go toward the closed end of the frame. Okay. Now that we've got all four casters installed, go ahead and flip the base over and we're gonna install the uprights. We're gonna install the upright support panels onto the base. First, locate the six bolts that you removed earlier when removing the base from the machine body. Grab a 14 millimeter wrench to install these and then finally the upright supports. The upright supports are marked with holes in the bottom. This has got a single hole, so that's number one. Number two has got two triangle holes, and number three, of course, has got three holes. The number one panel is gonna drop onto the closed end of the mobile base. The large diameter holes are gonna go down and they're gonna fit over the insert nuts. Line that up, drop it in place, and then insert the bolts. Next is number two, and this upright support is gonna go on the left-hand side of the open frame. Repeat the process of installing the bolts. Finally, panel number three, marked to number three, and you can verify that the notch in the leading edge is going forward toward the open end of the machine.
Okay, now that we have the uprights installed, we'll set this entire assembly to the side and we're gonna assemble the barrel assembly that's gonna go onto the cyclone body. So now grab the pieces of the cyclone assembly. We're gonna have the cyclone uh, intake cylinder, the cyclone drum, and the cyclone funnel. And then locate the foam and we're gonna install the foam on both the top and bottom surfaces of the uh, funnel assembly, just the top of the uh, inlet drum here, and then finally the uh, intake cylinder here is gonna go through and have the foam applied to the top. Now, this one already has the foam on it as it was shipped. If yours does, then just move on to the other two parts. Let's go ahead and get the foam tape put on. This is the seal on the top of the intake drum. Mine is already installed, but if yours isn't, go ahead and apply the tape now. Now the inlet drum will take a gasket on the top surface only. Make sure that the inlet pipe is on your right hand side if you're standing beside the unit here. This will be the top portion. Let's go ahead and install the seal on the top. Now this is the intake vein, which will be the first part that we're going to install onto the machine. Locate the hardware bag that will be marked Cyclone Barrel and Cyclone Drum. And inside of that you'll find a bag that is marked the Cyclone Vein. This is uh, also a vein assembly. And we're going to use the four bolts that have lock washers to install this. Now install the Cyclone Vein right over the holes beneath the impeller. And you'll have the lock washer first and then the flat washer that's going to go against the flange on the vein, put those down hand tight and then secure those with a Now the next step is to install the inlet drum and then the funnel assembly, but pay attention to where the seam is down the side of each unit here. You're going to align those two seams together so that they have a nice continuous line during assembly. The gasketed top of the inlet drum is going to be mounted up in the machine, so that means we're going to flip it upside down right now since our machine is upside down. Now place the inlet drum on the machine, and you'll feel that the gasket is seated between the machine body and the drum. Now there's a decision to make right here. Most of our customers will go through and use the uh, inlet tube here for the machine straight ahead, but you can actually rotate this to the right or left to match the installation and usage in your shop. So decide what you want to, uh, to use for your position of the uh, inlet tube, line it up, and then install the 12 bolt. This will be a 12 millimeter wrench. Finally, install the funnel assembly onto the intake drum. And this is the spot where we want to make sure that we line up the seams to keep your C-Flux dust collector looking as good as possible. The funnel assembly is secured to the drum using the bolt with washer and then a nut with washer for the bottom. Insert the bolt up through the bottom, washer, and then finally the nut. Repeat the process for all 12 bolts and secure with a wrench. Now that we have the cyclone installed, it's time to install the mobile base and the lower uprights onto the upper section. And we're gonna flip this upside down. But let's step over to the bench first and have a look at the parts needed to do this. Now locate and set aside here the three reinforcement plates that are gonna go onto the upright legs. The hardware bag that is marked here for the reinforcement plates and lower upright supports a 12 millimeter wrench, and I've already lined up the bolts and the washers out of the bag. Now we're ready to install the base assembly, the mobile base, onto the upper section. 
There are insert nuts at the tops of the columns, and you'll see that there are corresponding holes here right at the, uh, at the tops of each of these pillars. Simply lift this up, flip it over, and line it up and let those um, nut certs engage the holes. Now this is something that you're gonna need some help with. Have another person help you lift this up. Have your bolts ready to install in a few of these holes. Lift the base assembly up and carefully flip it over. The nut shirt body will line up with the holes and kind of lock these towers into position like this and then simply run the bolts through the bottom and tighten them and repeat for the other two columns. Next, take the reinforcement plates and install them on the inside of the leg assemblies. This will support the legs during the time that you flip the machine over and during use. So now that the reinforcement plates are installed on the legs and this assembly is rigid enough to stand up, let's go ahead and tip the machine over. Now I've already placed the cardboard out here so we don't scratch up the legs. We're gonna tip it over on its side and then again with two people doing this or three people, stand the unit upright. Take your time, uh, you've got a lot of weight here to tip up into the air. Now that lift to the upright position is probably the most difficult thing you'll do during the assembly. We did it with two people, but you might want to have three or more depending on your abilities and your shop layout and equipment. Now we're ready for the rest of the assembly and actually the easy part of the installation. The next part to install is the canister cover plate. And this goes on top of the machine, so you're going to need a ladder and you'll need to find the hardware bag that is titled canister filter. There's sheet metal screws inside that go to the top. Now this part's not in the manual, but I think it's a good idea to go through and put some foam tape on the bottom lip of this so that you don't get any small dust particles coming out the top. The canister cover plate has two sides and there's a lip around the outside perimeter. That lip is gonna go up and the foam tape will go on the back side. Here at the top of the machine, we'll lay the cover plate in place and install the sheet metal screws. After installing a lot of these loosely and getting them all in position, finally tighten them all down. The next part of the assembly is to go through and install the filter. Now first we're going to install the filter cleaning mechanism and we have to assemble it. We've got the filter cleaning rod and then the two paddle assemblies. These have rubber tips that will intersect the pleats of the filter itself and these are adjustable. You can see that easier while they're outside here. Simply loosen these nuts, slide the paddle inside and out so that it contacts the pleat on the inside. There are four of these quarter inch by five eighths inch long bolts that will install through the uh, filter rod and then the paddles will install on top of those, followed by two washers and then two locking nets. This will be a 10 millimeter wrench.
With both paddles on the same side of the rod, let's take the rod and insert it into the filter. Insert the filter cleaning rod with the bottom section, which will be the short section with a washer, down through the filter and into the hole at the bottom tab. With the filter assembly next to the machine, you'll notice that the cleaning paddle rod has got an extension on the top, and this is going to slide through the upper cover plate uh, on the dust collection body. There is a rubber ring that's a hard rubber that's going to go onto a flange on the dust collector, and then finally there's a band clamp that's going to secure this. You may find that it's easy to install, or easier to install, if you heat up the rubber ring with a hair dryer to make it a little bit more pliable. And then finally, the band clamp, when you install it, you're going to go through and make some adjustments to get the tension correct. But during the installation, you may find that it makes it a little bit easier if you simply remove this to get it in place. And then finally, to reinstall that and adjust it once it's up in place. And again, having a second person to hold this in place as you get the clamp lined up and to hold the upper portion of the shaft will be important. To tighten up the action on the upper band clamp here, you can tighten the screw in or out before latching it over the latch. Now we've got it secured here, and then finally we're going to latch this into place. The next part to install is the filter crank handle that goes on top of the machine. And before we do that, we install this little bearing. It's a plastic flange that has a seal on the inside, and it centers and it locates the top of that filter cleaning rod. We'll secure it using the four uh, bolts and washers that are provided in the canister filter bag. This will use a 10 millimeter wrench. The flat top of the flange and the, and the exposed portion of the seal are going to go on the top portion of the shaft. So it'll slide on just like this, push it down into place, line up the holes, and insert the bolts. Now install the filter cleaning handle. And there's an oblong hole in the top of the handle. We're going to use the large diameter washer to go over the top of it. And we're going to match that up with the oblong section of the shaft at the top of the filter cleaning paddles. Simply line that up, install the bolt with the large washer, and secure with a 12 millimeter wrench. Now finally, at the bottom of the filter, we're going to install the retainer uh, bolt at the bottom using the medium-sized washer. It'll go right into the bottom of the shaft. Simply side it in place, so tighten up the bolt, and secure it with the wrench. Now locate the two triangular support brackets here. They're angled at the top and that's why they call them the triangle support bracket. They've got a couple of large holes in the bottom that are going to line up over the frame. We've got the bolts here out of the bag that are marked triangular support panels. Let's go install these on the machine. Place the holes of the triangular support bracket over the insert threads. And finally, secure with a wrench. The next parts are these foot pedal support brackets, and you'll see the round holes here, and then you're gonna see the square holes for the carriage bolts. Grab the bag here marked foot pedal bar, and find the small carriage bolts, and we'll use these along with the washers and nuts to install them on the machine. Now have the small carriage bolts handy, and this is the foot pedal support bracket, and it's gonna be installed with this little lip going to the upward position. This will install on the inside portion of the frame, Simply install the carriage bolt from the outside, slide it over, and bolt it in this position. And finally, secure with the wrench.
Now locate the two foot pedal bar assemblies. There's a left and a right. And if you'll position these with this little lug facing the upward direction and with this nut facing up, you can look at the left one. It kind of looks like an F. So we're gonna take the left one and install it on the machine. Now take the left hand assembly with that lug stud facing toward the inside and go in at the top, over at the bottom, and then finally let the bracket hang down on the inside. Now using two of the inch and three quarter bolts from the uh, foot pedal bag, simply swing the bar out of the way, insert the bolt from the inside toward the outside of the machine, install two of these bolts and just let them stay there with no nuts on the outside until we get the top portion assembled. Using two more of the inch and three quarter bolts, line up the upper portion, drop the bolts through, and then secure them in place with a washer and a nut on the bottom. Now there's a little plate in here before we tighten it down. What you'll want to do is to make sure that it's pushed back to where it's even with the end of this bracket. Just put your finger on the end, line both of those up together, and then pull toward the inside of the flange, and then finally tighten this down with the wrench. Now locate the two small U-channels and the associated hardware. These will be the inch and three quarter bolts with the corresponding washers pre-installed, a washer and a nut for the outside edge. Let's install these on the machine with the 12 millimeter wrench. The U-channels will slide over the bolts already installed on the lower portion of the foot pedal bar. Slide it right over, slide on the washer, install the nuts and secure. Finally, secure with a wrench. Now repeat this process on the other side of the machine. The next component is what they call the octagon bar, and this is a part of the foot pedal bar assembly here. Locate this. There are two what they call toppings, or they're essentially a roller that are gonna go on the inside. And go ahead and find the countersunk screws that are gonna go match up on the insides of those. And finally, a five millimeter Allen wrench will be used to tighten those. The first step is to install the bar in its spring-loaded position. With the octagon bar in this position, and the uprights pointed upwards. Simply hang these on those little lug studs that are on the insides of the spring-loaded bars. Push inwards and let it spring outwards to hang on that. Let it hang in place and we'll install those rollers on the top of this. Now take this little assembly that looks like a spool. They call it a top, you know, I call it a roller. Slide it over the post, install the countersunk screw. And again, with the five millimeter Allen wrench, tighten this down. Again, back in the foot pedal bag, you're going to locate the hardware that has the two larger bolts and they have the matching lock nuts on those. Let's install those with a 17 millimeter wrench. Raise the octagonal bar next and then line up the support link. Match up the holes, insert the bolt through from the outside toward the inside. Now using the nylon lock nut, secure this. Do not tighten this nut all the way down. Get it close, but leave some play so that there's some uh, movement in the bar. Finally, secure with a number 17 on the outside and a 14 millimeter on the inside. Now, repeating this process on the opposite side, we'll simply swing the link into place and line up the holes. Insert the bolt from the outside toward the inside and finally the nylon locking nut will go on the inside. Again, remember when securing this nut, tighten it almost all the way down, but don't fasten it tightly. We need some motion here for the handle. This is a number 17 on the outside edge and a number 14 on the inside. Make sure that the handle moves freely throughout the entire range. Now 
Now push the bar down and out of the way. It'll stay down there in that lower position. And check out the tag here. This tag tells you to keep the bolts loose when we install the lid on the bottom of this flange. And that lets us position it because this flange can rotate. What I like to do is rotate it to where I've got one bolt right toward the front of the machine here. Then I'll remove the tag and we're gonna next install the lid of the drum onto the bottom of the cyclone funnel. Make sure you've got your foam tape on the bottom, line that up and let's go ahead and get the lid mounted to the bottom of the flange here. Here's the uh, octagonal lid and this is the lid for the drum assembly. This will be the dust collection drum. And you'll notice that these holes are slightly slotted and that gives you a little bit of movement once you've installed it on the flange. As we're installing this, take the bolts from the package marked octagonal drum. We'll install these bolts and nuts and we're gonna leave them finger tight so that we can go through and position this lid exactly square in the machine before tightening those down. Preload all your washers onto the bolts and then have the nut and washer ready for the bottom side. Now position the octagonal lid with these holes facing forward and back. Put the black button toward the back and preload one of the bolts up in the top. You just want to get one of these started with a nut on the bottom to hold the lid in place and then you can put the other ones in a little bit easier. Now with one or two bolts started to hold the lid in place, just simply slide the other ones through to make it easier to insert the nuts on the bottom. Now with the bolts pre-installed, I can install the nut and the washer on the bottom pretty easily. I'll get these ones finger tight so that we can leave the, uh, the flange loose and rotate it for proper positioning before tightening down later. Now that we've got the bolts and nuts in position and finger tight, you can see the motion here on this upper flange. And that'll allow you to float this adjustment and get proper alignment right before tightening these down at the end. When we do secure this, that flange will bite down to the funnel assembly here and this will be locked in place. Now locate the crossbar and this mounts underneath on the inside below the drum. Take two of the nuts off that are diagonal now that we have this secured in place. Install this crossways, bolt it in place. And this is gonna improve the separation on the dust collector as well as keeping the bag from sucking up inside the drum. Now we're ready to begin drum assembly and we're gonna start with the base. Locate this octagonal base for the uh, bottom of the drum. And I'd like to pull it off the edge of the workbench to install the hardware. You're going to find the hardware in the octagon drum bag. And you're going to locate the four swiveling casters. These will be the smaller ones without the locking portion here. And simply install the bolts from the bottom up. Drop the caster over it. Install the washer and the nut. And repeat this process until you have all four casters installed. This will be a 12 millimeter wrench. Now that we have the casters installed on the base, let's grab the two drum halves and assemble the drum. Here are the two drum halves. Locate the square hole and put it toward the top. Now we have the two drum halves set up on the workbench. I'm gonna locate the hardware bag that has the screws. There should be 10 screws that go through to hold the two drum halves together. I'll pull that out, get those ready to go. Now I'm gonna stand up the drum halves, lock the two halves together, and run the screws in to secure it. These two drum halves have a lip on one side and a shoulder on the other side. Those will interlock and let you assemble the drum quite easily. Line up your 12 uh, sheet metal screws and using a Phillips head screwdriver, secure these two drum halves together going through the hole and tightening down the sheet metal screws. Having the drum on its side will make this installation much easier. OK, 
Okay, with that last screw in place, now we're ready for the next steps on the drum. Leave it in the horizontal position to install the base and the handles. Locate the two side plates. These are gonna to mount to the side of the drum using the carriage bolts found in the pedal bag here. These will simply install through the outside into the square hole, through the side of the drum, and then finally the washer and the nut. Secure these and then repeat the process on the opposite side. Now we're gonna install this bracket on the opposite side. These handles only fit one way. There's two bolts on one end and one on the other end, so they're only gonna fit in one direction. And we'll use the 10 millimeter wrench to tighten these down. Now find the bag that has the drum handles. There are two handles, and they have the corresponding hardware in the same bag. You'll take the bolt, insert it through the inside, and then using a Phillips head screwdriver, you'll tighten these screws down to the matching acorn nuts that are gonna slide into the handle on the outside. I like to do this before I install the bottom on the drum to make it easy to reach in both the top and bottom handles. Now that the handles are installed on the drum, it's time to install the base. And the base is held in place with these small screws and little acorn nuts. I would get a small crescent wrench to hold the acorn nut and then a screwdriver to drive the screws from the top or the inside of the drum out to the bottom. The acorn nuts will go on the bottom. And this is the last place that you're gonna need a helper to uh, assist you to hold the uh, nuts on the outside while you're coming at the screws on the inside with a screwdriver. Let's get in the drum. Now that we've got the base installed, use the handles to lift the drum onto the floor. This will give you plenty of collection for your machine. Now that the drum is assembled, Take a few moments, use the enclosed tube of silicone sealer and seal around the base plate and up the two sides to make sure that all the joints are sealed and that you don't have any fine dust particles escape your machine. The next step after you've done the silicone is to install the rubber seal around the perimeter of the top of the drum. There are two rubber beads. One of them has a wire insert and that's gonna lock onto the lip at the top of the drum. The other one has got a flexible rubber cushion and that'll seal against the drum lid um, on, the, on the machine itself. Go ahead and seal position inside the drum to make it easy. Grab a pair of diagonal cutters to cut this to length once you've got it installed and start working your way around the drum. Push it over the flange. I like to make the parting line in the back but you can place it anywhere you like. Once you get to the end Line up the ends very carefully, cut to length. And finally, press the two ends in at the same time for a nice firm fit. There we go, now we've got the drum ready to use. Now locate the package with the drum insert. I've already taken the bag off and you'll find that there are four panels with perforations and rubber handles. The rubber handles are gonna to go toward the top, so line those all up at the same end. These panels will assemble with a series of screws along the edge and just overlap them, assemble the panels as shown next. The hardware for the drum insert comes in this bag marked drum insert. You're gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver and a small wrench to tighten down the nuts and bolts. Right now with two panels assembled, let's install the third, just simply overlap it in the same direction. Install the screws, just like the last panel. Tipping the unit over on its edge here makes grabbing this last row a lot easier. This is ready to go. We've got the rubber handles on top. Let's go ahead and get this inserted into the C-Flux, but first, I find that it's a lot easier to put the bag on the drum liner before inserting it in the drum. It just saves you a little headache. Locate the drum bags, and these will be the tall bag inside the package of other bags. Open this up and slide it right over the top. 
of the filter liner. Now that we've got this over the filter liner, flip it over, and it's ready to drop inside the collection drum. Simply lower the unit into the drum, and fold the bag over the top edge of the drum. The drum liner is designed to hold the bag in place so that the cyclone doesn't suck it up into the collection drum. The other thing that it does is it can be easily lifted out of a drum full of sawdust by using the enclosed rubber lined handles. Now this drum can be used both with and without a bag. You'll see that we're going to do it with a bag in our installation here, but if you choose to do it without it, since you've sealed the drum, you don't necessarily need to use the bag. You simply just grab the handles, dump out the dust. You'll probably get dust all over you, which is one of the reasons you want to use the bag. Now to insert it in the machine, let's lift the handle and slide it in place. And this is going to be a test fit to make sure that our adjustments are okay. Slide it into uh, to place. Look for the little handles on the side to engage the pins and lower the handle. And this raises the drum to the upward position. Now I can go through and adjust this lid by rotating it. Now is the point where I want to go through and tighten down these nuts and bolts around the lid once the adjustments are correct. This looks good to me. I don't need to make any adjustments since we squared it up real good to begin with. I'll tighten those down and we're ready for the next step. Locate the hardware bag for the switch and we're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench for this as well as a Phillips screwdriver for the small screws. Go ahead and load the washers onto the bolts and let's install the switch on the machine. Locate the switch mounting plate. It's got four small threaded holes in the plate and we're going to mount the switch to those holes using the small machine screws. We're going to need to open up the switch box by removing this screw and putting those screws all the way through. Once the switch is mounted to the switch plate, the plate will be installed onto the switch bracket using the four larger bolts and the threaded holes in the bracket. Before you mount the switch, you may want to consider moving the switch to the opposite side of the machine if you need to for your shop installation. If your machine is pointing in the wrong direction and the switch is going to be against the wall, you may want to go through and remove the bolts around the top motor flange and turn the entire flange 180 degrees to orient the switch on the opposite side of the machine. In most cases, you won't have to do that, but if your shop layout is a little bit different and you need to rotate it, you can simply do that by removing these bolts, rotating the entire motor housing 180 degrees and bolting it back in place. Remove the screw from the bottom of the switch assembly. Open the switch cover. Opening the switch box should only be done with the power disconnected. You can open the switch box by just leveraging up a little bit to pop the tabs and exposing the top of the switch box. Allow the switch assembly just to hang off the front of the machine and pre-install the top two screws. Don't tighten them all the way down because they're going to go into a key slot on the back of the switch. Install the screws into the top of this plate. Now leave the screws loose with plenty of room to engage them on the back of these key slots on the switch. Slide them into place, and push them upwards. And now you can tighten those two screws down through the little cutouts in the switchboard. Finally, insert the two screws that are going to go on the bottom, which is now the top of the switch since it's upside down in the corners. If you need to push these wires out of the way, they have some flexibility, move them out of the way and install those final two screws. Now, once your switch is mounted to the panel, reinstall the front cover top first and then snap the bottom in place. And finally, install the lower screw. Now
Now let's mount the switch plate to the switch bracket. You're going to use the four bolts and a 10 millimeter wrench. First, install the bolts in the corners and just finger tighten them. Now let's tighten this down with a 10 millimeter wrench. The C-Flux 2 and the C-Flux 3 both have an 8-inch inlet port on the machine. We provide a splitter so that you can install 4-inch diameter hoses for your machine. There are two rubber caps that can seal off the unused hoses while you've got one connected to another machine. You'll locate those in the intake splitter bag along with the three screws that are used to attach this to the machine. And that's done with a Phillips head screwdriver. Let's go install this on the machine. The intake splitter will be installed on the inlet of the machine and there's a small tag here and what this indicates is it gives you the instructions for adding bleed air to the machine. If you've got your hoses coming off and you've got restricted flow coming in there, there won't be enough airflow to separate your materials, there won't be enough to activate the cyclone or to cool the machine. So we want to make sure that you have a little bit of bleed air and those instructions are right here. Remove this tag and let's install the splitter. Now you'll look for these little slotted holes in the edge of the intake splitter. Slide it over to match up with the corresponding holes on the inlet tube. Line these up and install three sheet metal screws. Okay, now that we have the intake splitter, there's just a few little finishing touches. We're gonna show you how to connect a power plug to your machine and to install the filter bag. When using the C-Flux dust collector, you're going to get a little bit of buildup of fine dust in the filter and occasionally you're going to want to go through and clean it out. In order to do that, there's a handle here that you'll rotate. You hear the flappers going against the filter on the inside and that's going to knock loose dust out of the filter and drop it down. Now we have a catch bag that's designed to catch all the dust that is knocked loose from the filter. It'll be a short bag, unlike the long bag that's in the drum. Simply slide this over the bottom of the filter and use the spring clamp to affix it in place. Simply slide the filter bag over the bottom of the filter. And to make this process a little bit easier, go ahead and pull it up a little bit of a ways here to get the clamp on. And then I'll just drop it back in place before tightening the clamp down. Okay, we've got the spring clamp in place. There's several different notches on the clamp itself to increase or decrease the tension. Once that's in place, Roll the filter bag down over the clamp. Now your bag is ready to catch the dust. Now your C-Flux machine is all assembled and it's ready to go with the exception of power. I want to talk a little bit about power. You've got three connections to make for the machine. The machine is shipped with a cord but no plug since there are many different types of receptacles in different shops. You've got one that is green and that is your ground. You've got two different hot legs and those are marked L1 and L2. Simply choose the plug that matches your shop outlets, slide it over the cord, make the uh, three connections and secure those. And then finally go through and reassemble the plug and screw it down tight. Your machine is now ready to plug in and to operate. You can operate your machine with the switch that's on board or with the uh, remote control. The C-Flux dust collectors come with this handy remote. It has an on and off feature, and this is a radio frequency remote. And that means you don't need line of sight to the machine, and it won't mess with the fluorescent lights in your shop. Using your C-Flux dust collector couldn't be any easier. This drum lift is absolutely genius. If you have any questions on the machine, watch our tutorial videos on our YouTube channel, consult your dealer, or go to lagunatools.com for more tips and suggestions. You can also reach us toll-free at 800-234-1976. Thanks for joining us today.